Okay, hello YouTube. Um, this is the video that I said I was going to do on the last video. Uh, it's just a bit more in depth um, about this Highlander Forces 44 pack and how I use it or how I've come to start using it, trying out different things, trying out adding different things on the front. Um, for viewers that have watched before, if you remember, I had the British Army NI patrol pack as it's known um, which is the sort of patrol pack they used in Northern Ireland hence NI pack and really good pack if you can pick one up in good condition but um, there's not so many around nowadays in good condition and that had a few issues like being a bit floppy uh, not having molly straps on the front and stuff like that and that's why I got rid of that and got this instead which I'd say is not quite as robust the side pouches aren't as big, which I really liked on the NI pack. They have massive side pouches, which is really useful. These ones are a bit smaller, but it actually does a job. And as I, I do have a video about this pack, quite a short video, um, and I say on that how this has been used in um, SAS Who Dares Wins, the TV show, or bigger versions of this, and that they are actually really good value for money, quite tough for their money. So I'm not sure if they're quite military spec or not, but they're, um, yeah, without spending a fortune on like Caramore SF or something like that, they're actually really good. So anyway, if we move on to the point of the video is how I've got it like set up and what I put where and how I use it really. Um, so I find bags for, for wild camping, for like just uh, maybe not so much hiking, but just like going into the woods and spending one night or two. Um, I think, find that having nice big side pouches is quite handy and you don't get that a lot of the time with hiking packs you normally just have like the net pouches for water bottles and the military ones tend to have actual like pouches sometimes they're called rocket pouches when they're big and removable like I say I wish they would be a little bit bigger you can get for the, the next size up from this um, I can't remember what that is but this is a 44 litre supposedly and uh, the next size up I suppose will have bigger side pouches but I like the size of the back main compartment I just wanted the bigger side pouches but without spending a fortune this is the compromise and actually it's worked out really well so I shouldn't really complain this is just a little just a little cheapo pouch that I stuck on the side I mean take it or leave it but it does have the molly strap so you can whack stuff on there at the moment that's got a bit of hand wash uh, that's it's really handy to have that like it's handy to have it handy if you know what I mean it's handy to have it like easy to get to uh, rather than having because if you've got dirty hands you don't want to go rummaging around in your bag making everything dirty looking for your alcohol hand wash stuff that was a bit toothpaste in there um, and some tablets but yeah I wouldn't say that's essential but obviously it does have that if you want to get a tiny pouch just shove on the side maybe a little pen knife in it or whatever um, I would normally use this pouch for trying to get some food and stuff in there and any extra little bits and pieces um, and at the moment it's just got a little sit mat and a trowel for digging holes for you know what on the other side pouch this is where it really comes in handy is the British Army bivy bag which fits nicely in there there's a little bit of space on top of it but if you bind that up tight put an elastic band around it or something that just fits in there quite nicely and that slots in and it's easy to get to and then you've got a little bit of extra space you could shove some pegs and bits in there but I put this little pouch again any old molly pouch will do this is a little side pocket from a British Army respirator pouch which is so big that it has this on the side of it and in there that's actually the bag for the British Army Basher, which I don't use for the Basher, and that's got like bungee cords and pegs and a few guy lines in there, enough to rig up a top with any kind of configuration, and then that just sits on the side there. If you knew what setup you was doing, you only had the pegs and lines or bungees that you knew that you needed like minimalist you could fit it in there with the British Army Basher there's enough room to just about get that in but I've probably got more than I need in there just in case 
so that's why that's in a separate pouch and I quite like having that but the main thing that I wouldn't change these two I could remove the main thing I wouldn't change is having this this stuffer pouch on the front I really wanted to have the molly straps on this bag for this reason either for a canteen pouch but I'll get to that or for a bigger pouch like this for stuffing your tarp into on the NI pack I would have used one side pouch for the bivy bag and the other side pouch for the basher or a tarp but these like I said because they're a little bit smaller it's a real squeeze to get even the British Army basher in there let alone the D and, uh, DD 3x3 it's, it's too much of a squeeze too much hassle so I ended up getting this stuffer pouch from Viper and it's really cheap and it's actually exactly perfectly what I wanted um, there's a lot of other things out there that are not quite right or they're ridiculously expensive and still not the right design it's got like a thinner material on the side I think that gives it a bit of stretch and then it's got bungee cords around it but the main thing is it's just a nice easy pouch that you can cinch or uncinch pull it out and when you stuff it away you just stuff it all in there don't worry about folding it up none of that you know, if anyone that's that's camped with a tarp or a basher before, that's the British Army basher, by the way. The D, DD 3x3 fits perfectly well in there as well. But if you've ever camped with a tarp before, you'll know that in the woods it gets covered in, like, potentially bird crap, bits and pieces, mud. You know, if you've got to fold it up, it's going to go on the forest floor, it's going to get covered in stuff. Then you're rolling it up, it's wet and dirty. With this, you just leave it hanging from, from your line and just stuff it in. I like stuffing rather than folding neatly and all that kind of stuff. So that goes on there and that is just perfect. It's really accessible. Pull it out, rig it up, you're out of the rain, you're out of the weather. Nice and quick. Um, rather than, you know, having it stuffed away in your bag or strapped to the outside somewhere or whatever. Really, really handy. So that's a Bivy and Basher setup. Boom, boom. This, like I said, food and any extras. I could leave that sitting out at the trowel, whatever main compartment, I'm not sure what's in there at the moment, it was just, it was in the cupboard, but that was my ground tarp, I would strap that to the outside of the bag somewhere, I do have these extra straps that I bought, put on the bottom, because you have these four kind of molly tags there, so you get some of these straps, you can put those around, and then, you know, you can have a roll mat, uh, if you want a bit of extra protection under your air mat or you like using a foam roll mat you can put the tarp in there the ground sheet tarp, it's just a cheapo tarp it's going to get dirty anyway, it's going to get ruined so it doesn't matter, just get a cheapo one that can go on there you can put a wool blanket under there depends on what your setup is and what the weather is but I always put something there um, hanging on the bottom in the main compartment I would have my sleeping bag which is all the bulky stuff basically, the sleeping bag, um, maybe an insulated jacket if I'm not wearing it whilst I'm walking, spare clothes or warm clothes, um, any just any extra bits, my sleep mat obviously, uh, the shelter system is all on the outside if you're doing bivy and basha. I have taken a tent with this bag before, I think I might have put some of the tent on the bottom some of it inside but you can do it it's a bit squeeze you'd need like a small one person tent obviously otherwise you've got to be going with like you know Vivian Basher or hammock I've done a hammock with this as well and that was fine uh, my hammock goes very small anyway then you've got the lid the lid compartment at the moment there's my fire starting kit in there Depends how much of that I'm doing. I don't need this whole thing. I could just take a smaller kit and then some, you know, leather work gloves for chopping your wood and just working in the woods and uh, handling your stuff on the fire, moving the wood around so you don't burn your hands, basically. But I would have probably all my electronics in there. Um, anything else that I haven't got room for anywhere else in the bag. Like, it could be... It could be extra clothes, um, could be ablutions, like wet wipes, medicine, toothbrush, bits and pieces like that. 
will also go in the lid. Then you also have this elasticated uh, stuff on top, which is really, really handy. Uh, obviously, putting something on top of your bag, is you want something lightweight. You don't really want to be putting something heavy on the top because then you're top heavy when you're walking along. Depends how far you're walking, obviously. But again, it could be my ground sheet on top, very lightweight. It could be um, like a jacket, like a waterproof jacket. If I'm not wearing it at the time because it's too warm, stuff that in there. It's easy to get to if it starts raining. Waterproof trousers, anything like that. Um, actually, I'll show you in a minute, but I have taken my um, poncho before. I've got a, uh, a waterproof poncho. That's a bit easier than jacket and trousers. If you're not sure of the weather, you can just throw it on. Again, having it there is just easy to access. Right, other bits that I would use with this pack. Obviously, first of all, if, if I was actually using a tent, then don't forget you don't need this top. So, depending on how small the tent is, potentially you could put it in the stuffer pouch, or, you know, there's molly there, you could, you could just change it completely if you're using an actual tent, but I generally wouldn't go for a tent with this. It would be Vivian Bashar or um, Tarp or Bashar with a hammock. But other bits that I would use with this, there's the DD, 3x3, three three. obviously it's not really squashed down at the moment, also I think there's some pegs or some straps in there with it, but basically that wood, that does fit in there, it looks big, but like I say, take everything out and squash it down, that fits perfectly well in that stuff approach, so if I'm hammock camping I'll probably use that rather than the um, British Army Basher, alternatively put that in the pack on the bottom of the pack top somewhere else and then use that for stuff in the hammock in whatever if I want to go in a bit of comfort and I'm not walking far I could take extra luxuries like this Trekology um, chair which I haven't done a video on this actually but it's basically a fold out chair yeah a bit more of a, a bit more comfort on a camp you know if I'm going to the woods I'm not walking far I'm just walking for the car park or load up I don't mind being really heavy and a bit uncomfortable for like a five ten minute walk. Again, you know it's got straps, so I can pretty much put that anywhere anywhere on this bag. But probably put it on the bottom so it's not too heavy, uh, not too top heavy. Um, but you could put it elsewhere. But yeah, I'd have that on the bottom and sacrifice not being able to carry something there, something lightweight like that, and then go on the top. Now you might be thinking, what about your cooking equipment? Because food can go in there but it's a bit difficult to fit food and all your cooking equipment if you've got pots and pans and things I mean if you're taking a big pot and a big pan and all that kind of stuff you probably do need a bigger pack unless I do have a little fold up pan I reckon you could fit something just on top of all your sleep mag and everything just put it right on top under the lid and that would be fine but if you're going all out doing proper bushcraft cooking then you're going to need probably a bigger pack. To be honest, this is a very small pack for a wild camp bushcrafter type person. So what I normally do is just take this little thing. Uh, it's a Helicon Tex. Uh, what is it now? Bait, some sort of essentials pouch. I'll put it up on the screen because I can't remember what it's called. I got it a bit cheaper from eBay, but it was brand new or hardly used. I can't remember, but it's, it looked brand new anyway. And in here I've got. Um, Nalgene, pretty much a litre, a little titanium cup that's big enough to do a small boil in a bag mill and obviously you could use it for a cup of tea, I'd, I'd generally take another cup to use that for food and stuff. Long spoon so you don't get your hands dirty. The lid for that is, is tucked away in here as well. So that fits just nicely, like I say, the, the one litre Nalgene bottle fits inside that cup and fits inside that and there's a little bit of space on top to stuff other bits and pieces if you want um, and then that has little side pockets for your sort of if you've got some sort of smaller cooking system which I've been using this little um, BCB Fire Dragon one which has worked out quite well for me it's actually still got rubbish in there from and when I went to the woods before, so I'll need to restock this and sort that out. But yeah, you'd have to have a very small cooking system to fit it in here. Um, if you're going bush car camping, you're probably going to start a fire. You could use that to cook on. Otherwise, a small system in here. 
And if you don't do that, you're going to have to find space in your bag. Again, you're going to need a bigger bag. But for a compact system, tea and coffee and stuff, or stuff in this side, extra little spoon for your tea and that. And that's basically a brew kit. It's more, more of a brew kit than a food kit. But like I say, you carry your food separately. And then you could cook on this stove. You could, you know, have a fire and then cook on the fire instead. Um, this does have molly, but I have I don't attach it to this bag. One because I've got the stuffer pouch there instead. But I have had it attached to there, but it's a bit of a pain because when you're in camp, you walk off and you have to keep going back to your bag every time you need the spoon, the tea, the sugar, the bits and pieces. If you take it all out, it defeats the purpose of having it all together and you're not losing stuff. So I would rather wear that bag as a compact system and then just sling this over my shoulder and just carry this separately. Or when you're wearing the backpack, you can put this over your neck and it, it gets trapped between basically your head and the top of the pack and it doesn't fall off. So you have that hanging down your front. You could attach this in a, a lot of different ways to be fair. It, it does have the straps to molly it onto something. But like I say, to just have it separately, you could just carry it with you to your chair or whatever you are, your little sit mat around the fire, wherever your base camp is. Leave your bag under your tarp so it doesn't get uh, wet. And you could just take this little pouch with you to sit there and make your brews and cook your food without having to go backwards and forwards to your bag all the time and to your shelter. Um, I don't think I've done a video on this, so I'll have to do a separate video on this as well, but... It's, it's a good little thing, it's got an extra little pocket down the back here for potentially a small axe or I've had a more a knife in there before. So that's quite handy when you have it separately as well because if you mull it on you're going to lose that, the ability to use that. So that's how I keep things compact in this pack, is this helps a lot, is this, this little brew kit keeping that separately and just slinging it over your shoulder. Um, again this is not really like a long distance hiking system depends how comfortable you are with carrying packs I tend to get quite sore shoulders and that so I would need a bigger more comfortable pack I've got a bigger Osprey pack for that for hiking um, but for bush crafty wild camping in the in the woods not walking too far this this sort of setup works really really well so yeah, um, I don't think there's much more to say about it, but I'll try to put some more details on the screen. But that is the pack. I'll show you the back of it, I suppose. So you can see what you get on the back. I've got a carabiner there, but pretty basic. Shoulder pads, not that padded. Um, the usual, it does have the chest strap with a whistle on it, which is pretty good. And a proper padded waist strap. So once that's on and you're cinched up and you get it right for you, it's pretty good. It doesn't have load lifters or an adjustable back. And that's why I say it's not necessarily a comfortable hiking pack. It could be. If you wear it with a bit of weight in it and you feel comfortable with it, then there's no reason why it couldn't be. But just for me personally, it doesn't quite do it. Not quite comfortable enough for long distance. It does have some good pads there. A bit of airflow. And it does have a semi-stiff back. It's got a bit of some sort of very thin board or cardboard in there just to give it a bit of structure so the NI pack was just bleh, it's just completely floppy unless it was packed out this has a little bit more substantial kind of rigidity to it which helps so yeah no load lifters no adjustable back but it does have the chest uh, the sternum strap and the waist straps something I did forget to mention is water obviously you've got a litre of water in the uh, in the Helicontex like brew kit pouch in the Nalgene bottle but if you like me you get quite dehydrated when you camp you like to take a lot of water you've got to find somewhere else on this bag potentially to take water now again if I'm five minutes from the car park and I'm going to the woods I'll honestly sometimes just carry like a shopping carrier bag like a plastic bag with some loads of water and any other drinks that I want, any extra snacks and stuff, you can just literally carry it in a bag, obviously. But if you want to just keep everything in your system, then you've got to find somewhere else on this bag. Now, I know I said I'm normally keeping 
my food rations and stuff in here but honestly is a sit mat really essential no the shovel can go somewhere else it can actually go on the outside of the pack somewhere and you can fit a litre water bottle and some food in there to be honest with you there's enough space in there to do that so it's not it's not really a problem it's just adjusting it slightly to the camp to the situation and to your preferences that pouch is big enough you could potentially add things onto this bag again you know you could put a bigger pouch than that a bigger pouch than that so there is ways of doing it but yeah water i think what i've done normally is just take it separately or shove it in there with the food rations and that's it forget about this you know if you've got a hammock you can sit on that so that's about it guys so if you want to know about any of the other things maybe the chair or the little uh, brew kit you know put in the comments i'll try and make videos about them as well separately i've got plenty of stuff still to make videos on so just tell me what you want to see but until then don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching